The Lord be with you. Extend a warm welcome to you all as we gather today on this Lord's Day to offer our praise and worship and to hear a message from God for all of us that uh, will help us get through the coming week. I do want to point out a couple of announcements in the bulletin. Um, there's the, the back of the bulletin has all the announcements. The largest section of that page talks about the Monroes coming on July 10th. Unfortunately, they have had to recancel, to cancel and reschedule that. We don't know when they will be able to make it, but uh, they will be coming back at some future time. I did want to note that uh, Dan McCurry is back in the hospital, uh, and so we continue to keep him in our prayers. I learned this morning as well that the final hymn today is one that you may not be familiar with, and it's one of those problems where, you know, you, you're in the church, Presbyterian church at least for so long that some hymns are just, tunes are familiar to you. Uh, this particular hymn tune is actually used three times in our hymnal, but apparently it, the tune hasn't made its way to this part of the uh, world, and so you, I hope you will forgive me. There will be a time in the service today where you can offer me your forgiveness. Uh, <laughs> during the reading of the scripture, Psalm 1, uh, I'm inviting you to sing a new song as well, to a familiar tune, however. Uh, at various spots, you will see note that uh, the words are printed in the bulletin as well as the readings, uh, and then you will sing uh, that. And then at the end of the sermon, I will invite you to sing the last two stanzas of that hymn. Uh, please remain seated for that. Uh, I, I guess I probably should ask your forgiveness as well. I understand that Last Sunday, there was a lot of groaning going on uh, from the jokes I told you. Uh, I'm not sure whether this is good news or bad news, but uh, last Sunday, my daughters gave me a packet of about th 300 dad jokes. <laughs> so, but you will have to wait until next year to feel sick again and groan on that. Uh, are there any other announcements or anything that anyone wants to point out? Then we are glad that you are here and let us be called to worship after one important announcement by Barbara. I, yeah, I do have one more announcement. The uh, flowers here today are for David and Elizabeth's 17th wedding anniversary, and we would like to send Dave our condolences. Uh. <laughs> and now if you'd please join me for the call to worship. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. This is the day the Lord hath made. Let, Let us, us rejoice and be glad. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall declare your praise. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Please stand as we sing our opening hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
In Psalm 66, we hear these words. Come and hear, all you who fear God, and I will tell you what he has done for me. If I had cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. But truly God has listened and has given heed to the words of my prayer. Blessed be God, because he has not rejected my prayer or removed his steadfast love from me. In the strength and this assurance, let us confess our sins to God. Awesome, awesome and, and compassionate God, God you have loved us with unfailing, self-giving mercy, but we have not loved you. You constantly call us, but we do not listen. You ask us to love, but we walk away from neighbors in need, wrapped in our own concerns. We condone evil, prejudice, warfare, and greed. God of grace, as you come to us in mercy, we repent in spirit and in truth, admit our sin, and gratefully receive your forgiveness. Amen. Hear these words of assurance from Psalm 32. Happy are those whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Happy are those to whom the Lord imputes no iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let us pray. Holy God, may the soil of our hearts be fertile ground in which your word may take root. Speak to us today the word we need to hear, whether it's a word of comfort or conviction, courage or correction. Plant it deep within us and bring it to fruition for the sake of the word incarnate. Amen. Our first scripture today is from the book of Jeremiah. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by the water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it's not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
I mentioned last week, I believe, that we will be looking at Psalms for the next coming weeks. And last week I started with the last Psalm in Book 1, and so what's more appropriate than to start with the first Psalm of Book 1 this morning? Uh, this is a responsorial reading in which you will respond by joining in singing. Listen now to the word of the Lord. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted in streams of water, which yield their fruit in a season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Tree of justice ever blessed, shade me with your righteousness. Teach me pray. O Lord, uphold us by your Holy Spirit. Daily increase in us your gifts of grace, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence. Plant us by the streams of living water. Amen. Tree of plenty, feed my soul. Nurture me and make me whole. Give me strength and hear a sign. Let me in your love abide. Fashion me, O Lord, to be firmly planted as a tree. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have a love-hate relationship with trees. Chris and I live in a subdivision called the Woodlands, so you can understand that there were lots of trees around where we live, and I love the trees. But about three years after we moved there, a freak windstorm came through and blew two pine trees from our neighbor's yard into our house into our house. They had to be removed. And so we called an arborist out to look at our trees and give us a, a status on their health. And this one huge tree in our backyard, it was beautiful. It wasn't quite producing leaves as much as we would have liked, but the arborist said, you know, come over here and look at this. And he took some of the bark and grabbed it and pulled it all off. So this tree was struck by lightning some years ago, and it's dead on the inside. So that tree was taken down, another one. Sometime after that, someone uh, who I will not mention was walking out to her car in the driveway at night and tripped over a piece of the driveway that had been pushed up by the roots from a tree that's located right next to that driveway another tree had to come down. 
Then there were two other trees in the backyard that were not quite healthy and weren't really doing much, offering much shade, so they came down as well. But we still have lots of trees in our yard. And I can sit on the front porch and look out and there's a beautiful tree that rises high up into the sky. I can go to the backyard and there's another beautiful tree that, that just provides so much shade and it just can just sit there and watch it as the, the wind causes the leaves to blow and birds fly around. It's magnificent. According to the Botanical Garden Conservation International, there are 58,497 different species of trees around the world. Brazil has the largest number of species of trees, home to almost 9,000 varieties. And apart from the polar region, where there are no trees, of course, the near Arctic area of North America has the fewest trees, less than 1,400. Another interesting fact is that more than half of the species of trees are only found in one country. And that makes them potential to disaster by fire or deforestation. About 300 species have been identified as endangered, as there are fewer than 50 trees of that species remaining in the wild. I love trees. You probably love trees too. They do so much. They provide shade. They bear nuts or fruits. They add oxygen to the air. Their wood is used for fire or to build shelter. They, are given, they give protection from wind. Their foliage and roots prevent erosion. They are beautiful in shape and virtually infinite in variety. And any property is more valuable with trees on it than without. The souls of poets have often been moved by trees. Most famously, Joyce Kilmer wrote over 100 years ago an ode about a tree that includes these words. I think that I shall never see a poem as lovely as a tree, a tree that looks at God all day and lifts her leafy arms to pray. Poems are made by fools like me, but only God can make a tree or Ogden Nash, who parodied this poem, saying, I think that I shall never see a billboard as lovely as a tree. Indeed, unless the billboards fall, I shall never see a tree at all. How true that is. In Psalm 1 we read, Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Well, when the psalmist talks about a tree, what kind of a tree do you think that might be? Fir? Poplar? Elm? Oak? Think about where you were born and where you were raised. What was the most popular tree in that part of the country? In Colorado, it might be the blue spruce or the aspen. In New England, it might be the sugar, red, white, or silver maple. In Mississippi, it might be the magnolia tree. In Louisiana, a bald cypress. In California, the redwood or the mighty sequoia. In Florida, the sable palm. Here's what the psalmist says. They are like trees planted in streams of water, which yield their fruit in a season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. Who? Who is they? What is this species? What are these beautiful, fruitful, fruitful trees with leaves that do not wither? Now, the name of this tree is unknown. It is somewhat rare, but beautiful when you come across it. We might call it the godly tree, or the righteous tree, or the sappy tree. Well, Psalm 92, 14 does say, they are always green and full of sap. In fact, the they are people like you and me, the righteous 
who are often compared to trees in the Bible. In Psalm 92, the righteous flurry, flourished like the palm tree. In that same verse and in Hosea 14.5, the righteous are compared to the cedars of Lebanon. In Hosea 14.6, a righteous person is an olive tree. And in Isaiah 61, 3, 3, we read, they shall be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. A palm, olive, cedar, oak, all with each and special characteristics. And we who are righteous are compared to these trees. Our psalm doesn't specifically say which species it is, so let me give a name to it. Let's call it the godly tree. So what are the characteristics of the godly tree? First of all, this tree is happy, tickled pink, to be situated there on the side of a stream, right where he or she is supposed to be. Happy are those. Now, let's be clear. God, God didn't put us on this earth, and Jesus didn't die on the cross so that we could be happy. Our purpose and goals for a meaningful life surely must go beyond this idea of being happy. That being said, we can also say with certainty that a believer who is unhappy, that just doesn't seem to be right. Now, we all go through periods of our life where we are unhappy, when life is out of sync, dysfunctional, or in turmoil. And there may be health and mental issues that need to be dealt with. And one hopes that these issues can be resolved. But the psalmist's point behind this healthy tree planted by streams of water is that the tree is happy. And there are reasons for this happiness, which we'll get to in a moment. But we can say without reservation that one characteristics, characteristic of the godly tree is that it is a happy, happy tree. Now. The godly tree that we are called to be is that person who does not listen or take bad advice. Perhaps one of the reasons that for the happiness is the believer is careful about those opinions she listens to and follows. This is particularly timeful in our culture today when there's so much fake news and so, much scam, so many scam artists out there trying to get us to do something or buy something. It's easy to listen to fools. The Apostle Paul was even surprised that believers were so easily switched around and could believe just almost anything. In his letter to the Galatians, he writes, I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting the one who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Not that there is a different gospel, but there are some who are confusing you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. The godly tree is that, that we are called to be is a person who doesn't walk down the same path as the wrong crowd. He does not take the path of the sin, the sin, that sinners tread. These people are strong and stand up against the current, against the flow, and make clear their path. The godly tree that we are called to be is a person that doesn't hang out with the cynical and unbelievers. Why would you hang around people who don't share your values? Yes, of course, there is a place for evangelism. And it's clear that Jesus spent a lot of time with sinners and outcasts. And it's important for us, even today, to do that in order to understand what their needs are and what their issues are. But the psalmist here refers to those people who tend to want to be with those kinds of people, the unrighteous, rather than being in the company of the righteous. The godly tree is not like that. The roots of the godly tree are sunk deep into the clear, pure water of everlasting streams, not the acidic, caustic waters of the cynical and the unbelieving. The godly tree 
that we are called to be as a person that delights in the word of God. Let's face it. Not many people are spending a lot of time in God's word. A lot of people are lacking this quality. The Bible is not the first book we turn to when we are in trouble or when we feel such joy in our hearts that we want to express our praise to God. It's not light reading, no question about that. Yet, it is the key to our moral and spiritual formation. And with a discipline of Bible reading, we can grow in our, excuse me, our faith and become even more healthy. For example, just reading five psalms a day will get you entire, all the way through the book of Psalms in one month. Read two in the morning and three in the evening, and you will have that seed planted within you. Do that for a year, and the word of God will be planted in your soul. But reading the Bible in, in isolation is not all there is to it. It is so important to gather with others, to read, to learn, and to discover what others have learned. The godly tree that we are called to be as a person who not only delights in the word of God, but digs into the word of God continually. And on his law, they will meditate day and night. A strong, healthy tree is the person who is into God's word. It is an aspect of their life, their daily life. The godly tree that we are called to be as a person who is fruitful. These people yield their fruit in a season and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. It's the apple tree that delivers apples in season. It's the cherry tree that delivers cherries in season. It's the fig tree that delivers figs in season. And the godly tree, is that what we are called to be, is a person who has great foliage. This is a leafy tree. Psalm 92, 14 says that they are always green. And the prophet Jeremiah said, and its leaves shall stay green. Now this doesn't mean that we're all supposed to be wearing green clothes all the time. But the godly person is a righteous person who looks good, acts good, and is good. It's the kind of person that you would want to hire. It's the kind of person that you would trust with your children. It's the kind of person that you would want to manage your office. It's the kind of person that you would trust implicitly. And you could say that the godly tree looks good. But the godly tree also makes others look good as well. Trees with lots of foliage help keep our atmosphere rich with oxygen, benefiting everyone. And the believer is like that too. She wants to help others breathe easier and live better. People are better because they hang out under the shade that other believers offer. And this godly tree makes God look good too. Isaiah 61.3 says, They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display his glory. The godly tree glorifies God. And with all the beautiful foliage, even in a season of drought, it glorifies its creator. Now, I would love to end the sermon right here. And you may like me to end the sermon right here as well. But this psalm is one of those two kinds of people psalms. There are those people who are godly, and then there are those people who are not. And maybe we need to, need to take a, a little moment to look at those. And the contrasting image between the tree is the chaff. Now, this is not a word that's in common use today, unless you grew up in a farming community. The literal meaning is husks of corn or other seeds separated by winnowing and threshing. It's that light, fluffy stuff at times that gets caught up in the air after, uh, and it gets into your lungs. It's hard to breathe and you gag on it. 
until the stuff settles. And then what do they do? They sweep it out, collect it all up, throw it in the garbage, and burn it because it has no use. The unrighteous are like that, the psalmist says. In their personhood, they are created in the image of God. But their actions identify them not as oaks or cedars or palms or olive trees, but as chaff, as corn or seed husks that are inevitably swept away. And remember what Jesus said about unfruitful branches in John 15? I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. So, what do you want to be? Do you want to be a tree or chaff? Chaff and husks that are blown away in the wind, or a cedar or an oak tree. Strong, healthy, majestic, firmly rooted in the earth, and arms reaching up to the sky. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. I shall not fear when the heat comes and the leaves, and the, its leaves shall stay green. In the year of the drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. So what will it be? I say, be a tree. Would you join me now in singing the last two stanzas of Trees? Would you please now stand as able and let us sing together, God of grace and God of glory.
Psalm 16, 1 says, Protect me, O God, for in you I take refuge. Let us turn now to God in prayer. O God, we are lost without you. Protect us from ourselves, our idolatrous ways, the violence we perpetrate, the destruction we fail to prevent. Our power is nothing compared to yours. Therefore, we seek your guidance through word and worship. We pray for the spirit to lead us in the path of righteousness. We seek our freedom in Jesus Christ. O oh God, we lift up to you this day the concerns of your people. We hear of wars, we hear of tragedies, we hear of people who are crying. We hear of people who need hope. And you have placed us in this world, O oh Lord, not to be comfortable, but to carry out your mission in the world, to proclaim your goodness, to share your love. Make us the instruments of your peace. Make us the instruments of your healing. Use us to be the instruments of your healing comfort to those in need. Our nation is in turmoil, O oh Lord, for we struggle with understanding what it means to be alive, when birth begins, the implications of an unwanted pregnancy. We are evil people, O oh Lord. We endure rape and incest. We endure fighting in schools, in neighborhoods, even between nations. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the, are the power behind goodness. Give us your strength, O oh Lord, that we can be a healing voice. God of our ancestors, many who worshiped idols, help us to heed the warnings of your biblical story our sor sorrows multiply when we fail to heed your truth. God of grace, we choose you and return to you today. You have set a path before us and we gladly accept your invitation to follow. As your guest, we give thanks for your acceptance, your inclusion and your overwhelming love. In your presence, may we be free to love others as you have loved us. Prince of Peace, our world is broken by violence, our relationships severed by grief. We lament the ways of our world that lead to death, and yet we revel in your path of life. In your presence, may we know the fullness of joy. Renew us, great God, in this moment of worship so that we could tread your path and labor in your field. Grow your kingdom here on earth. Start with us, we pray. In your mercy, beloved God, hear these prayers of your people. And now as the body of Christ, we pray as Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are called to hold the gifts we have been given with hands open.
ready to share. We do not hoard or hold tightly to what we own because we do not know, we do not own much, but borrow it for a time. Let us give from a place of abundant love and mindful care, knowing with God there is more than enough. Let us pray. Gracious God, your gifts to us are boundless. Life and liberties, vibrant color and melodious sounds, forgiveness and your divine presence, intelligence and creativity, work and worship, love and compassion. There is no end to your goodness and generosity towards us, and we thank you. We offer these gifts in response to all you have shared with us, for we always and only give you what is already yours. Amen. Please rise as you're able and let's sing him, How Happy Are the Saints of God. If you could be a tree, what tree would you be? There are quite a variety to choose from, but at least try to be a godly tree. Now go out into the world, have courage, hold on to what is good, strengthen the faith hearted, support the weak and help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.